you're a veteran mechanic or, or even an expert, tune in to 12 minutes and 48 seconds for special oil ring considerations on some new piston designs that we've been seeing more and more of. All right, guys, I'm just going to show you real quick a close-up here of a piston ring installation here. This is just practice, so this is nothing new or anything, but I really want to focus on this oil control ring and how people uh, install these incorrect. Go ahead and zoom in here. All right. You know, we talked about this yesterday in class. You could see the holes inside here where the oil is going to be basically scraped off the cylinder wall and then go back down into the crankcase, okay? So that's what we got going on. Now, what I like to do of my ring sets here, you guys, when you took them off, you labeled yours for the top sides. In this particular one here, you can see here that there's a dot. So Harley-Davidson's made this nice. And uh, you can see that uh, that would be the upside. Sometimes it's a T or whatnot. Sometimes there's a T or an A on there as well. Uh, you get your black ring, which is your second ring, and we call this the chrome ring, which is the top one. But I'm going to install, I'm going to focus here on putting the oil control ring together first. The big thing about this guy, like we talked about, was is that there's three pieces. Now, you guys, you, you that are in the program here, what would you call these little lines that are around here? It's a witness mark, right? So we've got that other video on that. So that means that this road something like this. And what that actually is, take a look here, zoom in on that. That's not necessarily scratches. That's where the carbon from combustion has went past there and kind of stained the ring. Does that make sense? So that's not machined that way. It's just how it's ran its life. That's just a carbon track. So uh, while you're zoomed in there, let's go ahead and take a look at the expander ring here. And we said here that this lip okay is the thing that people get into trouble on okay you can see the bottom one here and the top one and that rail has to rest against both of those so the expander needs going first and we put a top rail and the bottom rail if this rail is allowed to go on top of this here I'll put it together wrong if I'm allowed to go on top okay it's going to make it overall thickness much thicker, okay? And it's going to wedge and lock into the piston, okay? What I need, let's see if we can get the back side of this. Here I'm on top of that back lip. Notice how the back side of the expander ring disappears because the rail is on top of it. This would be incorrect. Okay, but I'm going to take and put it correct, and do you see how it's showing itself? There we go. This is the correct placement, and you can actually see the backside edge supports the rail out and in the correct position. So let me go ahead and do the bottom one too, try and see if I can't make a little sandwich here. <coughs> and when these are in the right place, okay, see that? Yep. Notice how the expander is inside? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these will go up and down the cylinder wall. And that oil will go scrape through the expander, through the holes in the piston, and down into the bottom of the crankcase. Let's take a look here at what this looks like if you do it wrong and you wedge those in place. So I'll make a assembly here with it on top. I can't see the back rail, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I look at this, do you see how the expander is outwards? And so that would also scrape on the cylinder wall, and we wouldn't want that as well. I'm not going to take the time to measure this. I think this video does a great job of showing the close-up of that. Make sense? So let's uh, demonstrate how to put it actually on the piston. So we've got some uh, assembly lube here on the piston and the ring here. Just go ahead and get a close-up of this gap before I move on. Okay, I'm going to try and pull this apart here. See the gap? The ends. We want to make sure that they're just butted up against each other. I'm going to try and once in a while you'll have this happen. That seems excessive and like, oh yeah, how could you mess that up? But the problem is when people put the ring expander on here, you can force that thin metal and wedge it in there with those ring expanders. Remember how they had like a ratchet on them? So this is easy to actually, easier to do when you're not really paying attention to it. So I'm gonna have it nice and loose in there. I'm also gonna look it up in the service manual too. They're going to tell us, you guys have probably seen before, 
I'm going to draw it here. You guys have probably seen quite a bit from our metric side that they say to do ring installation, something like this. Does that seem familiar? 120 degrees apart? Yep. Well, Harley Davidson does something a little bit different that I think is pretty cool. They use the corners. Okay? Regardless of any of these techniques, I'll show it in the manual here in a bit. No matter where you're going to put the gap or you're going to put the open part of that ring, one thing you'll notice is that they are not putting it across the wrist pin. Then it doesn't really matter on the expander rings because they're pretty flexible or whatnot. So we can uh, do this top one here. And sometimes we'll do it, I'll, I'll model it on this one. I'm going to go ahead and just do what I call walking it. This being left handed thing kind of really throws this setup off. See how I just walked it down one? Yep. And what that does is it just puts kind of the least amount of bend on the ring. It, tell me if I'm blocking, please. You're blocking. Well, no, no. you're good now. Okay. How am I going to do this without... Hard to not block. Okay, I'm not being successful in that. Oh, it's really hurting my back for some reason bend around like this. Stop. Stop. So go ahead here. And now that I've got this started here, you can see how I can kind of just walk it around. You see how I'm doing that? And I'm putting very little stress. Yep. What I'm going to try and do this time is not let this fall all the way into the second groove. I'm going to see if I can go ahead and just pop it. Nope, it slipped on me. It's a good thing about assembly lube. Okay, now see how I'm just setting it on there? Now one thing I want to try and do at this point is make sure I'm not on the expander. Okay. Make sure and find <clears throat> you guys won't be spending near this amount of time because you're you're gonna be just putting it on, makes sense. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's out of the way of this gap for right now. Okay, so now that I'm here, I'm gonna take and walk this around. Same thing as I did before. I'm kind of being really careful, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Okay, I do not want that to get on top there. So now let's zoom in here and let's see if it looks like something we saw before. Okay, does it look like the expander is inside compared to this ring? Yep. The rail, I should say. And the other thing that I'm trying to do is just go ahead and compress this. Now, these are used rings, so there's a bit of a gap here. And I'm, I'm just making sure that I'm on top of that. Another thing that I could do before I move on is I'm going to hold the rail with my fingers here. And I'm going to just take and make sure that these two will spin independently of each other. Okay, if not... This sit up here. If I can't hold the rail and spin the expander, do you see how I'm able to rotate that around? Yep. Okay, so that means that they're not locked or they're not wedged, and that's good. That's what I want. So then I'll very quickly, this is lubed up. This time I'll just go from the bottom. Here's how I normally do this. 
like this. Does that make sense? And then I feel like I have a lot of control, like it's not going to go flying on me. When this is assembled, I'm going to get those gaps right place. This is what I want you to be able to do. Do you notice how I could turn that whole assembly? Yeah. What that tells me is that I'm not on top of that expander ring. This right here, I'm compressing this with my fingers and I can rotate that. If that wedged or locked up, you'd know right away because when you go to spin the ring, the whole piston would turn. Okay? You have to do this step. If you don't, you're going to get into trouble. To have an ultimate verification, what you could do, this would be a good time to check your side ring clearance here and measure that per the service manual. That uh, oil ring installed correct? Absolutely. So I'll go ahead and just finish off these other couple of rings here. What you're going to see is we got our dot. This is the black ring or the second one. That's going to face up. Then we use this tool. I'm going to preload this on here. This has got oil on it and very lightly the minimal amount of drag and then install that ring. I squeeze it and I rotate it. That tells me if there's any problem. I'm going to do the top ring you're going to see the same thing where we have a dot on here. And it looks like this was put on by the technician that is not uh, marked by the ring manufacturer. This is something the technician did so we could put this used ring back in in the same direction. Great job there, Anthony. And we should get that on. Life is good. Let's show the Harley Davidson ring gap layout. Just for purposes to show you guys here, we copied this chart here that you can see right out of Harley Davidson. So you start with the expander, the top rail, and then the bottom rail, the second compression ring, and then the top ring. We're going to set all those gaps up in that direction. I'm going to go ahead and set all those. So I got to find my expander one here first. Now I'm at the expander. So my gap, my ring gap, is right here on that one. So then I'm just going to follow along. The next two are super easy. All I got to do is simply do that. Then I take my top one and I go here. You guys can see that there where the ring gaps lined up. And that's it. So now this piston is ready you could set these ring gaps with it on the connecting rod and it's probably less likely you're going to bump it when trying to put a clip in or something else okay we're uh service manual usage doing a sportster motor here and we'll talk about something that i've seen uh, multiple times on some recent pistons so the expander ring the butted edges of that do you see how they're facing up yeah in the other video on the evil one i had it down okay because it didn't matter i'll show you why this one's installed correctly. Let's zoom in there. Can you see how the, the gaps are up? Yep. Okay, so you can see that the reason why is these reliefs in the piston. You see how the bottom rail goes across that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so seeing these, I remember Harley Davidson at Skills USA was talking about this uh, at a station that they did. And they might have just been talking about it in the review or the training, but they were saying that people overlooked this. And I now on this sporty piston, do you remember how there were no holes drilled? Okay, there are no holes drilled for the oil to go through. So they're going to take and scrape the oil. It'll run around the you know ring, and then it has a way to exit out here and then get down into the engine through this relief path. Does that make sense? Okay, so I just wanted to point that out that there are going to be different procedures for different models.